what is that proverb that you have in the land of Israel saying the days are prolonged and the effect of every vision. Thus saith the Lord, I will make this proverb to cease. Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, the days are at hand. And the effect of every vision. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Speaking of the subject, avoiding vision failure. Part 2. The days are at hand. And the effect of every vision. Everyone who has a vision from God, a purpose from God, a direction from God that appears like it is not working out today, that spell of failure is broken. What God spoke to you and said to you must come to pass. It shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus. We want to understand those factors that cause vision failure. The things that antagonize the conception and fulfillment of vision. And when we talk about vision, we are referring to divine plan and purpose for a person's life. It is clear in scripture where we just read that vision can fail. Either fail to be conceived or fail to be achieved. Fail to be received or fail to be realized. And there are forces that I have called enemies of vision. That will be responsible for vision failure. And what are these enemies? Number one, the wrong company. The Bible said, iron sharpeneth iron. So does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. The Bible said, he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But the companion of fools shall be destroyed. The Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. It said, evil communications corrupt good manners. Your company affects your mindset. How you think. Your company affects your choices. How you decide. And your company affects your lifestyle. We identified all of this in the first service. Who you work with affects what you can see. But there is something very, very important I want you to know. In the issue of company. Not everybody is qualified to know your vision. Not everybody is qualified to hear your vision. Because sharing the right vision with the wrong people will lead to the wrong outcome. There are people you share what you think God wants to do with your life with and they want you dead. Am I communicating? I'm speaking scripture. You, are, you share with them, this is what I want to become in life. This is what God is showing me. 
this is where I am going and they want you dead. If you doubt me, ask Joseph. Genesis chapter 37 verse 5 all the way to verse 11. Joseph dreamed a dream and he told it his brethren and they hated him yet the more. I'm read, and he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said unto him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream. And told it his brethren. And said behold. I have dreamed a dream more. And behold the, the sun. And the moon. And the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told. It his father. And to his brethren. And his father rebuked him. And said unto him. What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the same. When you speak your dream to the wrong people, three things will happen. Number one, you attract envy. Number two, you attract hatred. And number three, you attract harm. Physical hurt. You attract envy. You attract hatred. You attract hurt. You don't want to be envied for nothing. You don't want to be hated for nothing. You don't want to be hurt. Then keep your mouth shut. When it comes to sharing what God is doing with your life with the wrong people. Behold, here cometh the dreamer. Genesis 37 verse 19 to 20. Let us kill him. They said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say that some evil beast has devoured him. And we shall see what will become of your dreams. Your dream is a threat to mediocres. If God is going to take you somewhere. Those going nowhere will react. And there is a sure sign to know. That you are going somewhere in life when there is some usual hatred from around. The wrong company is the enemy of the vision and the future. Number two is discouragement from delay. Discouragement from delay. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 3. He said, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. There is a time frame between the release of vision and the realization of vision. There is a time frame between the commencement of the vision and the completion of the vision. There is a time frame. Listen to this, don't forget. Every God ordained vision is worth waiting for. Every God ordained vision is worth waiting for. Wait for it. In the first service we saw how it took Noah 100 years 
for the word of God to come to pass in his life. God gave him the vision of the, of the floods, age 500. And the vision came to pass, age 600. God called Abraham and said he would make him the father of nations at age 75. And Abraham was the father of nothing for 25 years. How are you telling me I'm the father of nations and yet I don't have a child? And that child came only after 25 years. Job said, in Job chapter 14 verse 14 If a man dies Shall he live again All the days of my appointed time I will wait Until that vision comes to pass Until what God says to me Come to pass Until my expectation comes to pass No witch can stop me No wizard can stop me No economy can stop me No system can stop me I will wait until my change comes. I am here to announce to somebody, your change is coming. The vision shall come to pass and you shall wait. Say the loudest, amen. Let me say this. Waiting is not wasting. Or as far as waiting is on God. Those who wait on God can't waste in life. If it is God you are waiting on. And if it is what God said you are waiting on. You can't waste in life. So don't be discouraged. It will come to pass. Number three, enemy of vision is unrighteousness, ungodliness. Righteousness exalts, sin is a reproach. That will be Proverbs chapter 14, I think verse 34. Sin is a reproach. Uprightness will make everything work. Unrighteousness will Cause will, will, will stop everything from working. How many of you know of Solomon? How many of you know that Solomon was not qualified in the first place to be the choice of God for the king of Israel? Because the arrangement that brought him was a wrong arrangement. His father slept with somebody's wife. What's the name of the man? Uriah the Hittite. And sent the man to the battlefield and the man died in war. And he took the wife and married the wife. The woman was pregnant. Even though that first pregnancy, the child died. The, second, the next child was Solomon. Meanwhile, there were other children who were legitimate Wives, children of, 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 of David. But God chose Solomon. And Solomon embraced God in the tenderness of heart. Such that when they made him king, he was too shocked. And he said to God, there are so many people around and you chose me. He offered a thousand. The Bible says Solomon loved the Lord. That was his qualification. And Solomon loved the Lord. Walking in the statues of David his father. He sacrificed and burnt himself in high places. He loved the Lord. And Solomon offered a thousand burnt offering. And God appeared to him and said, what do you want? He said, I'm not looking for nothing. Just give me wisdom. Let me know what to do to serve you well. That was... The kind of person Solomon was. And God said, I am going to make sure nobody is as important as you and after you. When Solomon got money, the first thing he built was the temple. Am I communicating? Before Solomon built his house, he built the temple. 
It took him 14 years. With gold and silver. That was the kind of heart he had for God. Before he would even build his own house. But after he built the temple. And he became successful. He began to marry many wives. 700 wives. 300 concubines. Sahaba Solo. Seven hundred wives. Three hundred concubines. That was there was the difference between he had seven hundred officially that he married and three hundred girlfriends. The total population was 1,000. If the women had three children each, on the average, if they could, that is 3,000 plus 1,000, 4,000. That is a full church congregation. If, if you say a big church, mega church, if you say let's have altar call, all of you come in the morning. Are you looking for? But that was not the worst part of the issue. It was what that iniquitous life led Solomon to. Solomon now began to build temples for the idols of all those wives. Each one came with a shrine from their country. Let's look at that. First Kings chapter 11 verse 1 to 8. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Not just women. No, there's a difference between woman and strange woman. Loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edo Edomites, Zidonians, Ittites. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said, to the children of Israel, you shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto this in love. They charm you. And he had 700 wives, princesses, 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh. That is, and he built a church a temple for the abomination of Moab in the hill that is before Jerusalem. He built another one for Molech. This Molech, they used to sacrifice children for it. Throw children into the fire for that God. The abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise he did for all his strange wives which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Solomon built one temple for God, 700 temples for devils. Hello? One temple for God. 700 temples for demons. Because of association. On the account of Solomon, the kingdom of Israel divided. The northern kingdom, the southern kingdom. It was torn into pieces. It's not possible. Solomon could not retain his vision. If Solomon had followed the Lord, maybe those 700 temples would have been built for God. Every city of Israel would have his temple. Everyone, everyone. The temple of Solomon would have multiplied everywhere. But he diverted it and built for all these strange wives. And his, and, and his vision could not come to pass. This is combining the issue of association and the issue of iniquity. Be careful. 
I said in the first service, there is one choice between transgression and vision. If you made the choice for vision, you have made the choice against transgression. If you have made the choice for transgression, you have made the choice against vision. That was number three. Unrighteousness, ungodliness. Number four is the snare of imitation and competition. That attempt that tries to outdo other people who told you you are better than me? Who told you you are bigger than me? Anything you can do, I can do too. No. Life is not designed for imitation. It's not designed for competition. It is designed for full expression of potentials and manifestation of destiny. You are not looking for who to imitate or compete with. Your greatest duty is to give full expression to potential and manifest destiny. We read in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 12, he said those comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. They can't be wise. You know, what made Israel to lose out? Was when they went you know what pained God? When Israel went to Samuel and said, give us a king so that we can be like other countries. What? Other nations that I have been defeating for your sake? Other nations that I have been clearing for you? First Samuel chapter 8 verse 4 to 7. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him behold you are old and your sons are not walking in your ways now make us a king to judge us like all the nations but the thing displeased Samuel when they said give us a king to judge us and Samuel prayed unto the Lord and the Lord said unto Samuel hearken to the voice of the people in all that they say unto you for they have not rejected you it is me they rejected they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. King, they rejected me. According to all the words which they have done since the day I knew them, brought them from the land of Egypt, now they have forsaken me and they want to serve other gods. Don't worry. It's not you they rejected, it is me. You know, that brought Saul on top of them. It, it, it brought Saul. <laughs> because to me, Saul is like a curse. The first king of Israel, this is my personal understanding the first king of Israel came because Israel wanted a king it was from the second king of Israel David that normalcy was coming Israel wanted a king and if you see how Saul was selected everything was physical nothing spiritual his only qualification was that he was taller than his brothers. From his shoulder up, he's taller than the rest. For David, he was the man after God's heart. This is my understanding. God, if they had allowed God to give them a king, in God's own time, David was waiting to be raised and be made king. But because they rejected, they didn't want, before, because they decided to give themselves a king. God said, okay, let me make an emergency arrangement until my perfect plan is ready. He gave them an interim plan. A plan that was less than perfect. It's like the Ishmael Haga arrangement. Hello? And they suffered for it. They suffered for it. That will never be your portion. Imitation invites complications. Competitions invite complications. The, the, the life of Israel became complicated as they, as they decided to compete with other nations. Everything got complicated. It invites complications.
Number five. So that I can try and round off this thing before time is up. Procrastination. Inaction. Procrastination. Failing to act when it is time to act will lead to vision failure and destiny failure. Procrastination. Vision is for runners, not for crawlers. That they may run. The vision is for an appointed time that they may run. Directed. It's not for crawlers, it's for runners. Vision is for action. Not for procrastination. When God has spoken or given you direction for life and destiny, is for action. Not procrastination. How many of you know the name of the firstborn of Israel? The firstborn of Jacob, what is his name? Anybody knows? Reuben. What became of Reuben? Nothing. Why? Apart from the fact that Reuben was an iniquitous young boy who had immoral relationship with his father's wife. Reuben was a man of great indecision. A man of great procrastination. Am I communicating at all? There is no destiny for the indecisive. Where there is, where people are unable to make decisions and they are given to procrastination, they don't have a destination. How many of you know that Joseph suffered most of the things he suffered because of the indecision of Reuben? Genesis chapter 17 and in verse 21. When, sorry, 37, 37, 21. When they wanted to sell, let us kill this boy. Come now, let us kill him. Cast him into a pit. In verse 21, the Bible says, Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. Now, instead of taking him home straight, the Bible said, Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that, that is in the wilderness and lay no hand on him. He said that he might read him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass now to save us time instead of saying as the firstborn you can't touch the boy not when I am alive not when I am here instead of taking the boy from their hands he said put him in this pit the bible says he, he was planning so that later on he can come and pick him but when he was away they sold him Reuben and that thing followed Reuben to his generation. When Deborah was in battle, Judges chapter 5, he called the men of Issachar, they came. He called everybody, they came. He called the Reubenites, they refused to come. Judges chapter 5, verse 15 to 16. You look at that. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah. Even Issachar and also Barak, he was sent on foot into the valley. But for the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Should we go? Should we not go? And they pray, now verse 16. Why abodest thou among the sheepfold to hear the bleatings of the flocks, Reuben? For the divisions of Reuben, another translation says there was great indecision, procrastination. He followed them. No wonder today, yet the tribe of Reuben were divided. They could not decide to come. Why did they stay behind with the sheep to listen to the shepherds calling? Why all those campfire discussions diverted and distracted? Reuben's divisions couldn't make up their mind. 
you will make it. Somebody say it louder, amen. Somebody say the loudest, amen. If God is speaking to you, shout the loud most, amen. See, after me, I will take the right action at the right time. I refuse the plague of procrastination, the plague of indecision. I refuse it now. There, there is somebody who needs to take a course that would have changed their status and changed their lives and everything. And he has been deciding for the last seven years. Procrastination. Number, number six is the wrong timing. Even though we are to act quickly, it is also important to know that there is a time to everything under heaven. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 and verse 11. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose. And in verse 11 he said, he has made all things beautiful in his time. Because of time, I want to quickly round off. God is a God of times and seasons. Israel remained in captivity for a time. 70 years. Daniel chapter 9 verse 2. Daniel understood by books. The time that Israel should accomplish in, in captivity. And that was when he prayed. There was a perfect timing for the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Nothing could be achieved until that day came. There was a perfect timing for when the Messiah should arrive the earth. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. In the fullness of time, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Effort is massive when time is unripe. Effort is massive when time is not due. Hallelujah. So when you have a vision and when you have a direction from God, the question is, what is the time, Lord? What is the time for this fulfillment? The wrong timing can cause vision to fail. In the first service, we saw how Moses went before time. And he failed. Finally, the wrong approach. The wrong approach. The wrong approach. Have you read this passage before? Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 6. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore the misery of man is great upon him. Do you have the New International Version? For there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. Proper what? And what? There is a proper time and proper procedure for every matter. Every matter has its time. It has its procedure. Though a person may be weighed down by misery. Proper time and procedure. Goliath can be killed, but not by every kind of weapon. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38 and 39, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David guarded his sword upon his armor, and he tried to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, 
I cannot go with these. For I have not proved them. And David put them off. You cannot fight the battle of the Lord with the armor of Saul. If it is God's battle, it requires God's armor. Many of us are trying to fulfill God's vision to us with somebody's strategy. Somebody's um, way of doing it. And I'll get to that later in the third service. 